everyone, and welcome to our Definite Guide to Mix panel. Uh, this uh, update's being done in 2019, and the last time I actually uh, recorded uh, this course was back in 2015. Uh, so it's been a couple years, or a few years really, since I've done, I done an update, and a lot has changed in the Mix panel world. Uh, a lot of the fundamentals are still very similar, especially when it comes to implementation, but there's a lot of cool new things, new interfaces, um, new integrations, a lot of new things as the industry and the product as a whole has changed. Right? Now, if you're here, you might be vaguely familiar with Mixpanel. Maybe you've seen a little bit about what the product is. Uh, so let me give you a, a quick introduction of, of why a company uses Mixpanel and some of the common use cases. So we'll start very high level, uh, the, really a strategy level. And then as the course goes on, we're going to dive deeper into technical details, like implementation details, best practices. We're going to look over all the reports, all the functionality. Um, and then we'll look at some competitor analysis. Uh, we'll compare uh, uh, against some other tools, maybe tools you have seen yourself, like Amplitude, Segment.com, uh, Woopra, likely Google Analytics, the, 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 the typical things that tend to come up. And, and then we'll finish and we'll look at pricing a few next steps. Now, if you don't know uh, who I am or who we are, you know my name is Ruben and I'm the founder of Practical Analytics. And we specialize in helping software companies and product companies uh, using analytics data to improve the conversion rates, to decrease marketing span, uh, improve user retention. Uh, so typically for us, companies come to us when they want to implement uh, a stack or they want to implement specific tools. Uh, and we have done a lot of work around Mixpanel, around Amplitude, and really around this category of tools, which is the event-driven product tools. Now we have seen uh, several use cases. We, we work a lot with marketing teams, uh, and there's other use cases that the uh, Mixpanel also tends to work on. Uh, so some of the most common ones, let's say you're uh, a SaaS company, you have a software product, uh, you know, Mixpanel can come in, it can help you, for example, uh, at the high level, start uh, to better understand where your users are coming from. Right? Most marketing teams are able to see, okay, we drove X amount of traffic, and that drove 1,000 signups. Right? They can see that. Uh, and they can see how that breaks down from a marketing spend perspective. But then if you ask them, okay, of those 1,000 signups, how many of them actually onboard it? How many of them actually use the product? Or even better yet, how many of those 1,000 signups are actually retained six months later? Those tend to be product questions, you know, and, and, and a little bit harder to answer. Looking at the signups is relatively very short term. Uh, so it's something you can get by just looking at, you know, the last few days or even, you know, last 30 days of data. So something like Mixpanel can come in in that mix and help you answer questions like that and look at those 1,000 signups and see what their actually performance, uh, what the performance is six months later uh, when it comes to product usage. That's, that's one use case. Uh, you'll see things like uh, funnel reports, uh, you know, probably one of the most popular reports Mixpanel uh, offers, being able to see where users are dropping off. Uh, if you have an onboarding uh, flow or, or funnel that you use that users must go through before they can use your product, this is the type of report that you can use to figure out where the drop-offs are happening and how to improve it. And you can, of course, segment it. That'll be one of the things we'll, we'll look at. Uh, user retention is another big use case, right? Uh, you may be getting lots of users to sign up for your product and even onboarding, but maybe your retention is quite low or, or quite weak. Uh, so you want to be able to dissect uh, what's going on with your user retention, who is actually using the product, who is not, and be able to segment that based on the data you have. Marketing teams also will use Mixpanel to send campaigns. Uh, so you can send target campaigns. Uh, typically, you can send, um, let's say you have an email drip, right? You have a, a five-day email drip, five emails over five days, uh, and you send it to everyone. That's sort of, let's say, level one uh, when it comes to uh, notifications or campaigns. Eventually, you can maybe tweak your campaigns to be much more customized. So maybe you send email one only to users who haven't um, uh, gone through the onboarding flow. But once they do, they won't get email one, they'll only get email two, and so on. So you can start to create criteria based on who should get messages based on what they've done or they haven't done. And of course, Mixpanel supports sending messages uh, across email, SMS, push notifications, uh, there's actually in-app notifications uh, on web and mobile, actually. Uh, both of them are available. So it's about four or five different channels you can, you can send messages on. And you can, of course, use your Mixpanel data to send that. Uh, so this actually, the message is actually one of the biggest selling points uh, for a tool like Mixpanel. And you'll see that when you compare it uh, against other competitors, uh, that some of them miss this. So the ability to send messages uh, is, you know, it's the ability to look at your data and take some kind of action, as we can see by the handy new labels here. Uh, there's a little bit of AP testing, uh, just geared towards mobile. I'll, I'll go over that in more detail. Uh, so a lot of those use cases were for software companies, product companies. Uh, you can see e-commerce companies use this to 
to improve conversions, to better understand what's going on with purchases. Um, I've seen uh, consumer tech companies or media companies. Uh, I know Mixernal has done some work with companies like HBO and so on. Uh, but a lot of them are actually using it to improve their apps, uh, improve their, their products. Now, the, the really a lot of the, the or really some uh, of the mixed metal features were designed for a mobile world back when mixed metal was created, must maybe like ten years ago. Um, so you, you'll see some things that are kind of mobile only. Uh, so you see their focus, but I still see a lot a lot of web companies or or even cross platform companies. You know, they have a, a, a web app and mobile app still be able to use mixed metal and, and tie it in. Um, so there is a, a lot of different ways. Uh, I also seen customer support ticket. Um, because the support teams use mixed metal data to improve their uh, their actual their actual work, so they'll be able to take a user who submit a ticket, integrate with something like Sendesk or or something similar, and then look at the data, see what the user did, you know, see their exact timeline of product usage, and then be able to debug that. So that's another use case uh, that I've seen, uh, maybe not as common as some of the other ones I mentioned. But that's really it. Uh, there's a lot there's a lot mixed metal can do. It's a very flexible tool. Um, it does require some implementation help. Or you know, usually some learning around the implementation. Uh, typically, why companies come to us uh, and similar you know agencies to us, uh, and we'll, we'll go over that. So we'll go through some of the pitfalls that companies struggle uh, to get to get value out of out of Mixpanel and to really uh, make it worth uh, their time, the time it takes to implement it, and of course the actual costs uh, that you're paying it. But that's it. That's it. That's it for our introduction. Uh, in, in my next video, I'll talk a little bit about crash course and some of the terms that we'll be using a lot uh, throughout this course. And then we'll dive right into uh, reports. And the first report we'll look at will be the, the fundamental report in mixed medical insights. Uh, and we'll start working through that. See you in the next video.